Consider this scenario. You're collaborating with an outside contractor to come up with a set of models for a product. The contractor doesn't use SolidWorks, he uses a program called AwesomeCAD, because according to the contractor, models created in that program are, quote, awesome. The contractor has come up with the preliminary model, a hollow encasement for a carving knife, and has exported it to a neutral file format that you can work with in SolidWorks. Unfortunately, upon import, you realize that the model is a little bit less than awesome. In fact, it's a garbled mess of broken, disjointed faces and solids. It's possible that the contractor could send you an improved model if he just makes some changes to his export settings, but more than likely, you're going to have to do some repair work on your end. Thankfully, SolidWorks gives us some simple and effective tools to make quick work out of repairs. The tools we'll look at in this video are Delete Face, Filled Surface, Delete Hole, and Untrim Surface. We'll also use curvature analysis, zebra stripes, and deviation analysis to check the model for curvature continuity. To begin, we need to import our model, which in SolidWorks that's just a simple file open. And we can see that we've been sent a step file, so just a neutral CAD file that we can work with in SolidWorks. And the options that we use for the import are greatly going to influence the steps that we'll need to take in the repair process. So we'll take a look at the options real quick. And we'll see that by default, SOLIDWORKS is going to try to form solids. So anywhere where it sees enclosed volumes within surface bodies, it'll fill those enclosures with material and create solids. Generally, that will accomplish what we're looking for in SOLIDWORKS. So we'll keep the default for now and see what we get. Now the part that we're expecting is this hollowed out but constant wall thickness solid part that we can just stick into an assembly and use. Um, as we're going to find out, that's not going to quite be the case. So we'll open this part. Because this is not a SOLIDWORKS native part, it's going to prompt us with the import diagnostics dialog. So we'll say yes, we do want to run import diagnostics and that's going to identify whatever issues exist here. And some problem areas are identified. We have a faulty face. We have some gaps that are happening between surfaces. And so let's try to heal all the faces and gaps. So we'll heal all faces, heal all gaps. And we can see that some surfaces were created to make this a watertight volume. And all of the problem areas have been resolved over here. So. We'll say OK and see if this has accomplished what we were looking for. FeatureWorks asks if we want to proceed with feature recognition. In this particular case, I'm not looking to populate a feature tree. Uh, I just want to work with the existing geometry. So we'll say no. And as we inspect this, we look over at the feature tree and we see that we have two solid bodies. Now, we were just expecting one solid body with a cavity on the inside but that doesn't appear to be the case. Um, if I hide this outside body, we see that we actually have filled in material there on the inside. And if we look at just the outside body and take a section view of it, we'll see that it's not hollow. It's actually solid all the way through, which is not what we were looking for. We know, however, that the internal body was created from the internal faces of the hollow body. So uh, we could safely assume that if we were just to subtract the inner body from the outer body, we should accomplish that shell part that we were looking for in the first place. So to do that, um, that's an easy operation in SOLIDWORKS. We'll just select our two bodies and we'll say combine. And we want to subtract one body from the other, but we want to make sure that the correct bodies are chosen here. The main body will include the geometry that's left over after the operation is done and the bodies to combine, um, that will be the body that gets subtracted out. And we can see that the two bodies are kind of opposite of what they need to be. So for the main body, I'm gonna click this outside body and bodies to combine. We'll pick that inner body and say subtract. And now if we look at a section view, we can see that it's hollowed out the way that we were looking for. We will notice that we have these extra faces that have been created in here. 
And just at a quick glance, we can't really tell if we have curvature continuity in here. We, we don't know if these are problem faces. So we have a few analytical tools that will help us find that out very quickly. From the Evaluate tab, um, the first thing I would look at is curvature analysis. And this shows us right away with this discoloration that happens along the edge of the face that there is a discontinuity in the curvature. So somehow this face is deviating from the surrounding face. If we take a look at zebra stripes, um, that difference in curvature becomes even more pronounced. Another analytical tool, if we want to put some numbers to this, is the deviation analysis. And if we look at deviation analysis along this edge, We'll calculate that, and the response we get is this color-coded set of arrows that shows us the direction and magnitude of deviation from the surrounding curvature. So we can see that along this edge, we're getting a deviation of anywhere from 0.21 degrees to almost 3 degrees, where everything is kind of tilted upward from the surrounding curvature. So definitely, there's some repair work that I want to do. I'd, I'd like to just um, get rid of this faulty face and fill it in with a surface that's going to give me a nice, clean, curvature, continuous surface all the way across. So we'll exit out of deviation analysis and see what our options are. In this particular case, we actually have a really quick and easy option for fixing this. Um, and that option is delete face. So from the surfaces tab, we have the delete face command. And within the delete face command, we have um, the option to delete and patch. And that's the one that we're going to want in this case, um, where it's going to delete any faces that I select. And then it's just going to look at the surfaces around and continue them out, filling in any holes. We'll pick the faces we want to get rid of. So this one and this one, and we'll try a delete and patch. And those problem faces are gone. If we take a look again at the curvature, um, you don't have any sudden changes in curvature or any discontinuities that happen because it's just a continuation of the existing faces that were there. So this was a quick and easy patch. Another scenario you may encounter is where import diagnostics is not as effective in repairing any holes or broken edges on the part and it becomes more necessary to use manual methods and surfacing tools to accomplish the fix. So we'll take a look at that now. On options, I'm going to uh, disable trying to form solids. We know that in this case, it's not going to form solids the way that we need to. So we'll say OK. And let's just open up that step file again. We're going to skip import diagnostics in this case. So we'll say no. And let's just take a look at what we're dealing with here. So we have three surface bodies. The first surface body is this outside surface um, where we can see that we've got a couple of holes here in the top. And we can see that it's not attached to this uh, globular face, the, the button. The second surface is the internal surface body. And from our last import, we know that that's actually a watertight set of faces, so that's going to be useful to us later when we try to create an enclosed volume. Now, we can see easily in this case that we had these holes, um, although in some cases it might not be so obvious. So we actually have a tool that helps us to identify where there might be any breaks in the surface, and that's the check command. So just using a command search with the S key shortcut, I'm going to say check. And we'll tell it that we are looking for um, invalid faces, edges, open surfaces. So we'll say check. And we see that we have a couple of options that come up. So if we click on the result, the first one, we get an arrow that points out the issue here, this open surface. If we look at the second option, this highlights the edges of the holes in this surface body. So again, in this case, those uh, issues were pretty easy to spot, but if those were much smaller or in a hard to see region, um, this check entity can really help you to identify where your issues are. Now the first thing I want to do in fixing this model is to fill in this hole along the top. So we have this divot in here and I'd like to just fill in that surface and create a nice smooth continuous surface that goes all the way across from one side to the other. 
And there are a couple of ways that we could accomplish this. So the first one would be filled surface from here in the surfaces tab. So filled surface, that's where I'm just going to pick the outside edges of a new face and it's going to fill in geometry as best as it can. So we define the patch boundary by clicking the edges. And instead of going in here and individually clicking all the edges, I'm just going to right click and say select open loop. And so it finds all the edges of that hole. And we have some different curvature control states here. Um, by default, SOLIDWORKS is going to try a contact surface. So this actually doesn't take into account the surfaces that surround this new face. So if we say OK on this and take a look at our curvature analysis, what we see is that we get the same discontinuity that we saw earlier when we let import diagnostics try to generate a new face. So we know that it doesn't give us a continuous face all the way across and we're going to have to use a different option. So we'll edit the surface fill. And instead of contact, um, we have a couple of other options here. So a tangent fill um, actually does take into account the surrounding surfaces, but only to some distance out. So it's not necessarily going to create a perfectly continuous surface all the way across as if there was not an extra face in there. But we'll see, since we still have curvature shown here, that it's definitely an improvement. But the option that's really built for what we're trying to accomplish here is uh, the curvature state. And so curvature is going to try to create a perfect continuity of curvature all the way across this face with reference to the surrounding faces. So we'll go ahead and pick that. And again, uh, curvature is still looking good. But more interesting, if we look at a deviation analysis and pick this uh, surrounding edge for this new surface, and we calculate this, we can see that our deviation is basically zero. Um, it's within a, a margin of error, basically, because we're looking at just a small percentage of deviation. So basically, it's a perfectly curvature continuous surface. Ideally, though, I wouldn't even want to have an extra face in here. It'd be better if I could just have a continuous surface all the way across. So. If we wanted to, we could go back to our last solution, which was a delete face while deleting and patching. And so we could pick that surface that we just created and delete it. And now we just get a perfect continuation of the original surface. That method works, um, but we did have to go through the extra step of creating a surface and then getting rid of it. So a better option would actually be this delete hole command. And so delete hole is going to save us that step. So we'll just back out of what we've done here. And from that starting point where we just had a hole punched in the surface, we'll use the delete hole command. And uh, when we select the first edge of this hole, SOLIDWORKS does understand all the edges that, that makes up the loop of this hole. So I didn't have to pick all the edges, just pick the first one and say OK on delete hole. And it's patched that surface just as if we had created a new face and then deleted it with a patch. So in this case, delete hole was definitely the best way to go to quickly patch that hole. So we're making some good progress, but we still have this problem face right here. We have this unattached button face that's uh, got a broken edge. So how are we going to fix this? I think the first thing I want to do is to hide the surrounding bodies and just look at the problem face itself. So we know that what we're going for here is kind of just a perfect globular surface with a nice round edge. So what kind of tools do we have to fix that edge? Delete hole is not going to work because delete hole is just made for internal holes. This is kind of open-ended. We could use a filled surface if we were to define an edge that makes up the rest of this round surface. So if I wanted to, I could create a plane just by uh, picking this edge, creating a new plane. We could sketch on that plane, uh, sketch an arc in here, and make sure that it's tangent. If we close this out, we could go back to our old method of trying to uh, create a surface that's going to have curvature continuity. use the curvature setting, say OK. 
So this might work if we look at curvature analysis. We can see that it looks uh, pretty good with some maybe possible discoloration here on the edge. But that still leaves us with the same issue where we've got this extra face in here where we don't need one. A better option here on the Surfaces tab is the Untrim Surface command. The Untrim Surface command is uh, really a fantastic tool because it's looking for how to create the cleanest and most simplified surface by extending out the existing face. So we can actually see that just with that first selection, that untrimmed surface kind of understood what would be a clean and continuous surface in this case. So I could go with this and just go with what SOLIDWORKS has predicted here. And we'll notice this 0%. And so um, you actually have built into this the option to extend out the edges. So if I were to give some percentage to this, say, um, 10 percent. We'll see that the edges that are preserved, you could extend those out. And in this case, we'll see that that actually could be beneficial. So we'll start with zero percent, so there's no extension. I do want to say merge with original, and so this is going to save me from having an extra face just sitting in here. So um, that looks like a nice patch. Um, but the thing that I don't like is that we don't have a continuous edge. You actually have this edge broken into two pieces. And if we were working with this edge in a context where we would be filling in material around it, that discontinuous edge could be an issue. So I think what I want to do in this case is actually extend out the surface beyond where it'll need to be in the end and use a sketched circle to come up with a clean circular edge for the surface. So let's roll back in the history before that untrim. And uh, let's sketch a circle to create the final edge for this circular face. So I'm going to create a plane just by clicking this edge. So that'll make it plain. Start a sketch on that plane. And we'll put a circle. We can see that it's already found uh, the center point for this circular edge. We'll place that circle. So this will be our final edge that we're going to use as a trimming tool here in a minute. Keep this sketch. And then in our untrim, we'll go ahead and extend out this edge a little bit. So we'll say like, I don't know, 15%. And so now we'll use the trim tool to trim away the excess. So our trim tool is our sketch. The part to remove is this extra section here. And now, if we look at the edge, we have a nice, clean, continuous, circular edge. And that's what we're looking for. So we'll hide this plane, show our other bodies. And let's join these uh, outside bodies together with the knit surface command. So we'll say knit surface, and we're going to create a watertight outer surface body. Hit OK. And so now we have two surface bodies. We have the outside surface body and the inside surface body. But we still need to turn this into a solid where we've got material between these two surface bodies. So the way that we can accomplish this is with the intersect command. So the intersect command is on your features toolbar. And if you say intersect and select your two surface bodies, knowing that there is a volume that exists between these two, I'm going to say create internal regions and say intersect between these two surface bodies. We can see that one region is created. We'll say OK. And we see now that we have one solid body. And so if I hide away these uh, surface bodies that we used for the intersect tool, um, let's take a look at this body that's been created. So if we look at a section view, we can actually see that this is exactly the model that we're looking for. And with that, our repairs are done.